Katie Burkhart, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you, John. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, it is a pleasure to be with you today. I'm super excited to have this conversation. We're going to be focusing on purpose and how purpose can be used to set our focus in life, in our relationships, in work, uh, everything that we do, you know, hopefully we have a, a good solid why behind it and a good purpose. And hopefully that will lead into how we focus on achieving those things, developing and maintaining and sustaining those different aspects of our lives. As we get started, I wanted to share Katie's bio with everybody. Katie Burkhart is the mastermind behind Matter Logic, the smart system for running a purpose-driven business, and has quickly become one of the go-to experts in the space. She is a serial entrepreneur, keynote speaker, minimalist designer, jargon slayer, and sharp communicator. She synthesizes connections that enable humans to make the most of the time they invest in their work. I love all of that. That's fantastic. Uh, particularly the uh, minimalist designer. I'm an aspiring, aspiring minimalist myself, and uh, I, I think that's fantastic. Anything else you would like to share with listeners by way of your background or personal context before we dive on into the conversation? Uh, I would love to share just a small story about how I got into this work. Um, it, just to, to sort of tee it off, because I know that there's a lot of points in there, um, which is my, my very first job uh, was as a lifeguard uh, at the pool I used to go to when I was growing up. And I, I looked up to these lifeguards. They were super cool. They, they had sunglasses and car keys because that's when you're 10, that's what looks really cool. Um, and I got this job and was told to do it. But by the time I was with my sunglasses and car keys, a, a great less people came to the pool. Uh, and I had a tendency to work the early and the late shifts because I had sports practices and other things going on. So I I looked at an empty pool um, an awful lot. And I used to watch, you know, it was a 15 minutes in one chair, 15 minutes in another chair, 15 minute break, rinse, repeat. Um, and I just used to remember sitting there basically watching the time tick down until the shift was over. And what I left with was, I don't ever want my work to be like that. And I don't want my life to be like that. How do I make sure I'm making the time I spend on whatever I'm doing really matter. Um, and that's, you know, what I'm excited to, to bring to my work every day. Um, and I, I hope I can share with others. Yeah, I love that. I think we've all been there. I've certainly had many jobs like that, where I'm just like watching the clock, <laughs> dying to get out of there. I remember uh, one, one job in particular, I was working at a factory. So it was very rote, um, you know, just repetitive type of work. And, and, you know, it's just kind of mind numbing work. And, the time would go by so slowly. I felt like, you know, it was typically a 10 hour shift. I felt like 10 hours felt like a week, you know, it just, it went by so, so slowly. Oh. And the only thing, the only redeeming factor of it all was I knew that I was doing this to save up money to go to college. And then I would be able to move on and never look back, you know? And so yeah. that's kind of what, what drove me for six months while I did that. Um, and, you know, more power to those people who had that job and, and, loved it and it, it fulfilled them and, and whatever. But for me, that didn't, that didn't do it. Right. And, and I knew that about myself early on and that drove me to pursue, you know, my passions and, and find my meaning and purpose in the work that I do and the education that I sought, the people I work with, et cetera. I think that's really important. Can, can we always do things that we love that, where we only do things that just fill us with meaning, purpose and fulfillment always? No, of course not. But we can uh, de design our life around things that are more likely to give us meaning and purpose. Mm -hmm. and, and that will help us, you know, get through the times where perhaps we do have to do that task that nobody wants to do and it mm -hmm. just needs to get done uh, or whatever. But it, it all has to start with that why. And we have to know why we're doing what we're doing. And, and we have to have a deeper meaning behind it. If we're just doing it to make money, if we're just doing it... Um, uh, for the status symbol of the keys or whatever, like you were saying, yeah, uh, that's going to fade so quickly. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the, the big things we have to look at is, you know, how do we really define purpose, both the, the individual and corporate level? So looking at it as, you know, an individual, I think one of the things that we have to recognize is not two things. One, not everyone's purpose is going to be to save the world. You know, some people's purpose is 
I want to do really great work. You know, like I care about the quality of the work that comes out. You know, I really want to refine my skills. I want to become a master of what it is that I do, you know, and, or being able to bring home a stable paycheck so that I can spend time with my family or spend time traveling or, or whatever it is counts. Um, and I think that that's a really important thing to understand that the value and the meaning is different um, for each person. And then I think when we think about meaning, sort of crossing that chasm between individual to business, a lot of the meaning isn't just, you know, this is, this is amazingly positively impactful. It's also, do we understand what the point is, you know, are we sitting in this meeting, you know, because we have a really good reason to be here all the way up to, are we all coming to work around, you know, a, a company that has a really good reason to be here, you know, or are we just adding to the noise? Yeah. Are we just adding to the noise? I think that's a, a great question to ask. I think, I think the pandemic has kind of pushed us to question the why and the purpose uh, and challenge assumptions and challenge norms, because there's so many things that we just did day in and day out, because that's what we do. That's what we've always done. We hold this meeting weekly because we always hold this meeting weekly uh, or whatever. And we, we did so many things that just didn't matter. And people knew it didn't matter, but it was just the, the flow and the norms and whatever. And, and certainly it wasn't just the pandemic, but the pandemic has given us a chance to do a little bit of a mental reset. And again, to challenge those assumptions and those norms and to, to do some self-reflecting on our own personal why, as well as organizations on their why and their purpose. And I think, I think that's been a really positive outcome of the pandemic, because I think most people have had to wrestle with this over the last couple of years. Uh, some companies haven't made it through. Uh, <laughs> some, in, some individuals have decided, you know, what, what I was doing is not at all what I want to continue doing. That's a big driver behind the great reevaluation, the great resignation. And, and ultimately, uh, I think it's a good thing, though, to challenge those things that don't make sense anymore. Perhaps they made sense at one point in time, but they don't make sense anymore. And we all, we've all been there. We've all been in those meetings that seem to have no point. This could have been a five-minute email uh, or a phone call or, or whatever. Nobody wants to be in those meetings. Nobody wants to, uh, to spend endless amounts of time and energy on something that ultimately isn't going to help the business. It's not going to help their career. It's not going to help the customers. It's, it's just pointless and so you're absolutely right. What is my purpose and what is meaningful and fulfilling to me likely won't be the same purpose or meaning, provide meaning or fulfillment in the same way to other people. But we all have to have that. And we all have to figure out what that is for ourselves. And as leaders, we have to figure out what that is for the people that we lead. And as an organization, of course, we have to figure out what the big why is behind why we exist, why we do what we do. Yes. Um, and I think the, you know, work as leaders to recognize that, you know, it's not about you, you know, is a huge piece of this. You know, we went through, I like to call it the great pause before the great resignation, where we had this collective moment all together at the same time of saying, is what I'm doing worth it? You know, and all of a sudden it was for people for different reasons, things changed, you know, but they were all largely asking the same question. Um, and I think as leaders, what, what you're having to stop, and I, I do this with my own businesses and be like, Hey, you know, is, am I doing this because it's about me or am I doing this because it's delivering value to the people I serve because it's delivering value to my team members because because I'm building mutually beneficial relationships with my partners. Like, how am I really thinking about that? Because that's where success really lies. Um, and helping your team members individually to understand not only what they value and what their purpose is, but then giving them space to actually fulfill that and, and understand how that contributes to your overall purpose is where that really starts to get powerful. Um, because at a, at a top level, we, we have to know why we exist, right? I like to talk about Forrest Gump and the, the ping pong ball. If you ever watch the movie? Um, he goes from watching this TV endlessly and people are like, how can you listen to that? And I'm like, what a brilliant example of noise. You know, like how, how can you please turn the noise off? They're like, I'm going to teach you how to play ping pong. And, and what the guy says to him is he holds the ball up in front of Forrest's eyes and he says, never take your eye off the ball. Um, and I think for a lot of us, you know, companies had the ball on themselves, i.e. how much money can I make and really drove everything they could towards that focus. You know, how efficient can I make things? How hard can I press you as a person, as a system, as a planet, however you want to look at that. The goal 
was to get to the money. As a purpose-driven business, the goal is to fulfill your purpose. That's the ball you have your eye on. And everything that you're doing has to drive toward that. And that requires a, you know, a completely different way of not only understanding the business and, and, and showing up as a whole, um, but what do we do once we get there and how do we go about doing it? And, and what I like about a ball is it's a circle, you know, ask what's the point. Yeah, absolutely. And you started to move us in the direction of focus, which I think is, is just a really important offshoot of purpose. Now, we spend a lot of time focusing or swimming amidst the noise. <laughs> we spend a lot of time, um, you know, focusing on the wrong things, things that just don't matter. And I, I was talking to someone the other day, and, you know, I was reminded of the oft kind of quoted saying, what uh, what we can measure often doesn't matter. And what we, what matters often is really hard to measure. Um, and it, to me that largely comes back to focus. If we're, you know, when we choose to measure something, that's what we want to focus on. We want that as our outcome. And we're going to put energy into achieving that thing. Uh, I think so often organizations choose the wrong, the wrong metrics, the wrong outcomes to focus on, or they're incomplete. They choose a set of three or four that might paint one part of the picture and they fail to ignore, they, they do ignore uh, so many other aspects that are also perhaps more important than those things that they uh, selected. And, and simply because of convenience or because of lack of creativity on how to measure what matters. And so we have to be thinking about what we should be focusing on, how we're gonna focus on it so that we can uh, lead to better um, positive, impactful outcomes related to those things. And it all comes back to the purpose that should drive the focus. And it's, and, and oftentimes it's the, the tail that wags the dog. We find ourselves in the, the, the flip side of that. And we allow the KPIs to drive everything that we're doing in the business, as opposed to having the purpose drive the KPIs. Yes. And I'm going to, I'm going to respond to that by, by backing into it with a story, which is, I was talking to one of my team members uh, the other day who came and said, you know, was going through his, his list of stuff, very organized that, you know, client said, we have this video opportunity because we're shooting, you know, we're doing this series of videos um, for, for this reason um, and said, well, we probably should take advantage of the opportunity and we should do other stuff with video. And, and what do we want to do about that? And, and without any hesitation and with no you know, niceties, I very bluntly responded, what's the point? Um, and he said, he sort of looked at me and paused. I said, is there something they want to achieve from shooting this video? Is there a particular video they have in mind? Is there a way they want to use it? Is, a, is there a, you know, greater outcome that we're trying to achieve? And we think video may be a tactic that helps us get there. What's the point of shooting the video? If you start with the point and work backwards, you will pick better actions to get you there because you can be more deliberate. In the case, in this case, you know, who are you choosing to interview? What questions are you going to ask them? How might you ultimately cut together the footage in order to achieve this end? You know, which is why working backwards is really important. Otherwise, you can quickly end up with terabytes of video footage of totally random people because, hey, we had a video opportunity and mayhaps we should shoot some people. Um, so when you really think about that, you know, getting it to set your focus, um, the way I like to think about purposes is a lens for decision making. Um, and the purpose is the focal point, you know, and the first question should be, does this help us fulfill our purpose? And I promise you, in most questions, you'll take half of the options right off the table, off the bat, because it has nothing to do with why you exist. Um, and then if you're really looking to do it better, you should filter it through the rest of your core strategy, which includes your vision, mission, values, um, and say, okay, does this help us achieve our vision? Does it help us you know, get to the outcomes we want to achieve? Okay, yeah. Does it fit within the unique capabilities, our distinct capabilities as outlined in our mission and in the actions we take? And can we do it within our values, how we actually execute those actions based on who we are as an organization? Um, and now you're starting to make decisions that really keep you focused on the right things um, and, and in a place to be really successful. Yeah. And much of what you were just saying reminds me of how easy it is to have mission creep and to just, you start to be all, try to be all things to all people. Uh, and that's a, a recipe for failure because you can't possibly be, we all live in a resource 
constraint kind of an environment. There's only so much we can do. And if you start to sh chase the shiny object thinking, oh, that's the next thing we're going to do. And you're not running it by your purpose and your, your mission, your values uh, and your vision of the organization, it's almost inevitable that you're going to end up going down uh, a path that ultimately doesn't align with actually what your core competencies are, the value that you can bring to the market. Yep. It's more distraction, more noise versus what you can, can really do and do effectively. Um, and that's where that narrow and deep is going to result in better impact than all over the place um, and, and help everything to make sense to the team that you're asking to roll up their sleeves and come to work every day, um, which is why one of the key shifts that we talk about, you know, leaders and teams needing to make is no is your most powerful weapon. You know, please don't say yes to everything. Say no, say no more um, at an individual level, I personally do a life review every six months and look at anything that takes my time from, I have to water my cactus so it doesn't die um, all the way to, you know, I spend time with my family. I have time on my businesses. I would like to exercise um, and then really look at, you know, where am I getting fulfillment? How am I, you know, am I learning something new? Like what are what needs to stay here. And the activity isn't really about adding new things to the list. It's about taking things off of the list because it's Bruning. not getting yep. the time and attention that it needs. It's not where my energies need to be invested right now. And what people have to remember is in some cases, no, doesn't mean no forever. It means not right now. But while you should do that at an individual level, companies need to be doing that at an organizational level. Um, in a lot of cases, when people go into strategic planning, or one-year planning or goal setting, however you call it, it's an exercise in all the new things we can add versus really looking at, you know, are there things that we shouldn't even be investing anymore because it didn't work that great in the beginning, or we've learned what are the people we serve value and what they need has changed. Therefore we need to shift how we're going about delivering that value. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm thinking of a, an organization I was working with recently and they had their strategic plan had something like 82 action items, <laughs> you know, and I, I'm like, okay, how are you possibly going to do this in any meaningful way? <laughs> yeah. you're, you're, you're chasing everything. Right. And, and, and there was nothing on there that didn't sound good. Like it all sounded good. And I was like, Oh, that, that sounds important. Um, but then so it's, it's not even about, about saying there are things that, um, that truly are counter to the mission that we need to get rid of, but it can be good things too. Like you said, sometimes the timing is just not right. And, and there's only so many things we can focus on. Uh, and so choose those things you're going to, going to really drill in on. And there, there might be tangential things that come up along the way that you need to reevaluate, maybe pivot. But man, when you get to the point where you're just having these ridiculously long lists of KPIs or, or action items or, you know, strategic points in your mission or in your, in your strategic, strategic plan, there's there, it's impossible to focus because there is no focus. Right. Uh, and, and I think, I think many organizations fall into that trap. Uh, it, it's just so easy to do, uh, especially when you're building, you know, those things by committee, uh, or by consensus, you end up just dumping a bunch of, of extra things on. And so having the courage to say no. And like, like you were saying, you know, I think of it in terms of pruning. I need to prune yeah. back in order for, for, a, for a, you know, a plant or a tree to really thrive. You have to prune it back. And if you don't do that, uh, it becomes overgrown and it suffers and it's not healthy. And it's yeah. the same thing. It's the same thing in my personal life, my relationships with, with my team, with my organization. Uh, it's, it's, it's what's going to drive more health. It's, it, it sometimes seems counterintuitive because you're cutting things back, uh, but it's going to, it's going to drive things in a more healthy direction. Yeah. And you, you, John mentioned something about measurement. And I think this is where you get into, um, you know, what's easy to measure versus what's hard to measure, or even just understanding, you know, working backward, you know, typically we start at the beginning. I can easily measure the output. I had 50 webinars this year and next year we're going to have 75 webinars, which means we did better. The answer is not necessarily you just did more. If you start at the end and work backward and say, what outcome do we want to achieve? What value are we delivering to the people we serve? And really the value you're delivering is what are you helping them do achieve or become? That's the question you're trying to ask and measure based on those pieces. When you get to pruning, what you're saying is where are we most effectively driving that value 
Where are we maybe not so effectively driving that value so that you can double down on the things that are really working versus just focused on how many more actions might I take? Um, but that does get into your point about what are we measuring? And outcomes are harder, you know, and will probably require you to talk to people and ask better questions and actually listen to what they have to say. Um, but since it's not about you, um, that's, that's a big piece. Yeah. And much of what you're saying reminds me of, of the idea of just having bookends to our strategy. You, you start with the clear purpose and the point. What is the point? What is our why? Right. And then once you figure out what your why is, then you want to think about the other end of the book, the bookend, right? You, now you want to think about, okay, so what, what, with our why, with our purpose, what would we expect to achieve? What are those outcomes that we want to see, right? So then now you have the two ends of the bookend, and now you can fill in the middle. You can work your way backwards, back towards the beginning. So then you can uh, think about the, the flow of how everything works together to get you to those outcomes, all built on the foundation of purpose which will allow you to focus on the right things. And then, like you said, you, you work backwards in terms of trying to figure out how uh, to best measure and evaluate what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, and, I, and I think a lot of times we, we only focus on the end or we only focus on the beginning, or sometimes we don't, foc we don't have either of those and we just like are doing all sorts of muddy, muddly stuff in the middle. Um, and I think we need to have the whole holistic picture if we hope to have sustainable long-term uh, growth and and positive outcomes and impact. Yes, because it, it really is one of the other shifts we we talk about a lot is, you know, the long game is the main game, you know, so how do we start to get more comfortable with, you know, measuring my 50 to 75 webinars is like instant gratification. I can see the little number tick up and I feel really good about myself, you know, but did it do anything, you know, so there's a understanding what you're targeting and how you're setting up those goals and how you're looking at, at that and how you're measuring things is part of that long game, but it's also part of setting up the expectation that it's going to take time and that you actually have to look all the way down the road to the vision and then be really excited about the focus and endurance it's going to take you to get there because it isn't going to be something you achieve next quarter and go woohoo. Um, and I think for us as people, as well as for us as organizations, getting people used to like if we're going to get there, we have to know where we're going and it, it may take us a while to get there, but it's totally going to be worth it if we're making the right decisions along the way. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. Well, Katie, it has been a real pleasure chatting. I note the time it's flown by. We're going to have to close up here in just a few minutes, but before we wrap up, I wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can get connected with you, find out more about your work, your team, and then give us the final word on the topic for today. I would say number one place to find me is LinkedIn. Uh, while I, I am mostly allergic to other forms of social media, I do enjoy the LinkedIn platform and I will connect with anyone who connects with me. And if you have questions or you just want to follow my posts, I post almost every day um, with something that is hopefully useful uh, to you. Please do. Uh, welcome welcome to have you. Would love to meet you. Um, the other place to find me is, is I am very proudly the, the author of Not a Book and uh, that I have put all of our thinking, our system, you know, what does it mean to be purpose-driven? How do I go about doing it? Um, up on the, what we call Matter Logic, uh, which you can find at matterlogic.co. And if you'd really like to get actionable insights in your inbox every week and be part of that community, um, please visit matterlogic.co backslash weekly. I'd love to have you there as well. Uh, final thought, which is what you asked for. I would say, um, if I had to leave people with a final thought, it's always, you know, asking yourself two questions, you know, what's the point? And if I'm struggling to come up with an answer, am I just adding to the noise and do what you can to not add to the noise, both as an individual and as a team, because your time is worth more than that. I love it. Well said, Katie. It has been a pleasure talking with you. I encourage listeners to reach out, to get connected, to find out more about what Katie and her team can do for you. I hope we can all strive for more clarity in our purpose, which will lead to better focus in how we go about living our lives. I hope that everyone can stay healthy and safe, that we can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week.